Happy New Year, everybody. It's January 4th, and I want to tell you about what we did today in class, and specifically with the PDF or the CDF function on the calculator, because that causes people a lot of confusion. It seems simple at first, and then it gets confusing, and people lose it. So just want to give you a little bit more help with that. Uh, first thing to talk about, however, is the empirical rule. Remember the empirical rule, or we also called it the 6895 99.7 rule. Okay, You can do a lot of stuff with a normal distribution just with that rule. Let me give you for instance. Let's say we have a random variable x which is normal where the mean is equal to 20 and the standard deviation is equal to 2. Okay, And let's say the question is can you find the probability that x is between 16 and 22? And the answer is, of course you can. The mean is at 20. And notice how 16 is two standard deviations away from the mean. 22 is, two sta is one standard deviation the other way from the mean. Notice that. One standard deviation, one standard, two standard deviations. So the probability we're looking for is really just this region right here. We already know that this amount of it is 68 percent. If we were to go out to 24 like that, then we would know that this would be 95 percent. So that means the spaces between the 68 and the 95, so that means this region here, and let me mark that in red, this region here and this region over here has to be 95 minus 68 is 27. Those two regions together have to be 27 percent, so each one by itself is half of that, or 13 and a half percent. And we've just solved our problem. The probability we're looking for is the 13 and a half percent plus the 68. And so this probability then is going to be equal to uh, 81.5 percent. And we can do a lot of problems like this just playing with the geometry. Okay, take a look at this one. I'll t keep the same picture up. Let's see if I can just snag the picture. Good. Okay, let's copy that. And let's go to a new screen. We'll go to there, and mu again is equal to 20, sigma is equal to 2. Let's find the probability that x is between 14 and 22. Not a problem. Let me just draw another picture. Yeah, I'm going to draw another one anyway. Okay, there's 20, 18, 16, 14, and I'm just going to draw three standard deviations on the other side also, 22, 24, 26. According to the empirical rule, three standard deviations on either side of the mean is 99.7 percent. I'm looking for the area between 14 and 22. So I'm looking for this area right here. Okay, well there's lots of ways to do this. I can look at it and say, alright, half of this would be from 14 to 20. Half of 99.7 would be, let me write it up here, probability from 14 to 20 would be 99.7 divided by 2. And that would be, get my calculator here, 99.7 divided by 2 is 49.85. Okay, so that's how much this region is. I'll color that blue. Okay, so let's color this blue. This right here is 49.85%. All I need to do is figure out this last part. Well, according to that same rule, the area 
between 18 and 22 has to be 68% because it's within one standard deviation of the mean. I only want half of that, so I want half of 68% or 34%. So altogether, the probability then is 49.85 plus 68. And that's, no, not 68, whoops. Try that again, plus 34, there we go. And that's going to be 70, 83.85%. That's your answer. So you can do a lot of problems like this, and it's just breaking down the regions into the probabilities you know they have to have. And the secret is, if you're looking right on a, on a standard deviation boundary, then you're, you're in good shape. And that's the way they can turn the problems around in reverse, too. They can give you a probability and give you a range, and the probability is going to be one of these numbers that's going to work out according to the rule. Okay, here's an example of what they can do. Suppose we have a distribution that's normal, whose mean is 20.5, but whose standard deviation we don't know. But we do know the probability of getting a result between 14 and 27 is equal to 47.5%. No, 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 no. I, I messed that up. Totally messed that up. Let's, let's make that 27 instead. Here we go. Okay, one more time. Normally distributed random variable whose mean is 27, and I know the probability of being between 14 and 27 is 47.5%. Can you find the standard deviation? The trick to all of these questions, guys, is you have to draw a picture. And I'm going to beat you up on that. We know the mean is at 27. We know from 14 to 27, that wasn't a very good straight line, is equal to 47.5%. But notice something. 47.5% is half of 95. So that means there's another 47.5% over here and this is going to go the same distance from 27 as 14 is from 27. 13 units, this is 40. Okay? How many standard deviations do we know we have to be away from 27 in order to get this probability? That's right, we have to be two sigmas on either side. Well, it looks like two sigma is equal to 13 because it's 13 units from 14 to 27. So sigma is 13 over 2, or 6.5. Okay, that would be a really good question they would give you, uh, and that's one you cannot do on the calculator. Calculator requires you to give it mu and sigma before you can figure out the probabilities, and that's where they get you. So you do have to know the concept and know how to work these problems backwards. Okay, part two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the calculator stuff too, so go ahead and take a look at part two now.